Dealing with Landscape Diseases, Part 2. Alright, for the second part of this series, I want to talk about cultural controls, integrated pest management, and the importance of plant health in regards to reducing disease in the landscape. Um, I remember when I first started getting involved with this line of work and, and people would talk about cultural controls and this and that and the importance of healthy soil and, and I thought, ah, yeah, 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 just, you know, spray your trees and they'll be fine. Well, let me tell you something. After 25 years of doing this, um, one thing that I have really learned is the importance of cultural controls, the importance of integrated pest management, the importance of having good, healthy trees to help uh, avoid having pest problems in the first place. So we're gonna talk about a few of those things right now. Uh, I want you to understand, first thing I want you to understand is disease pressures and insect pressure. We talk about this a lot in, in my line of work. And what that means is if you remember the, the fungus triangle that we talked about in my first video, uh, pathogen, host, and environment. Uh, disease pressure means that you have an extensive amount of one of those things that's going to make your trees very prone to being infected. If you're having a horribly rainy season, then you've got the environment and that can put you under a heavy disease pressure. If you have a heavy amount of pathogen in the area, then that corner of the triangle can put you under a heavy disease pressure. Um, and this is where cultural controls can really come into play. And a big part of cultural controls is sanitation. And I cannot stress this enough. Yeah. All right, and here we are with my apple trees on my property. I've been here for about four years now, and I use strong cultural controls on my trees. I always clean up the leaves when they come down. I occasionally will take a walk through, and I'll pinch out any leaves that don't look good, um, you know, any apples that aren't right. Uh, I do fertilize them occasionally. I haven't fertilized them in like three years. I'm about due, ready to fertilize them again. But again, the fertilizer just to keep the tree healthy so that it can fend off insect and disease problems all on its own. Uh, if you take a look, you can see, I mean, you know, the, the leaves on these trees are beautiful. I mean, they're dark green, they're turgid, they're very healthy, you know. Uh, I've got fruit up in here. We didn't have a great fruit set this year because we actually had a late frost and it, it had an impact on our fruit. But we do have some and you can see the apples look really good. Okay, and just to put things into perspective, I sprayed this tree four times. That's it, all year, and I've used strictly organic products. Uh, I only use organic stuff on our property because as you can see right here, we've got our chickens. Our chickens come out here and they free range. So there's no way I'm gonna use any chemicals out here and run the risk of my chickens eating something that they shouldn't. So with just four simple applications of a very benign organic products, I've managed to keep really a good healthy tree, you know, without having to use any chemical pesticides at all and and only a few applications uh, part of my cultural control thing is every once in a while I'll just take a walk through here you know and I'll look for things that don't look right you know we got it looks like we got some probably got some aphids on here so I clip it off I throw it in the bucket um, as you come through here's a broken branch right here a little little dead branch on the tree we'll take that off we'll get rid of that uh, if you look in here, sometimes you'll find little uh, mummy fruits. Little fruits like that. Those are obviously not going to amount to anything. So I'll pick a few of those off. Here's another one here. Uh, this one actually does look like it has some, some kind of a rot on it. So I'll take all the stuff and instead of just dropping it on the ground, I'll throw it in the bucket and I'll bring it back and I'll throw it in my chicken pen. This way it's far away from my trees and my chickens can eat them and they can compost them and, and get rid of them. So here's another one. So here's another little fruit. It isn't going to amount to anything. And so I do this, oh I don't know, maybe once a week. You know once a week I'll come through, uh, just walk around, look for things that don't look quite right. Sometimes I'll do a little bit of thinning on the trees, you know, if, if they're getting a little too thick or full. 
I'll cut a few branches out to open them up so that we can get proper air, you know, proper air circulation and proper sunlight through them so they can dry out faster. Uh, I've got the same kind of situation with my peaches over here. Down here you can see I got some leaves on the ground and these probably do have a little fungal spot I do have some fungal spot on them and some of this might be from the heat it's been very hot lately it's been uh, yesterday was over a hundred today it's it hit the mid 90s but uh, you know I'll just go through and I'll just kind of pick these up because I don't want the spores from these leaves to bounce back up and hit my peach trees again and again I mean if you look I mean, I've got peaches in here, and they look pretty good. And again, with minimal applications, just a few applications, all organic, and a lot of cultural controls. Keep your tree healthy. Uh, trees are a lot like people. You know, uh, if people are in poor health, they're going to be more prone to getting sick. If people are in good health, they're going to be less prone to getting sick. Trees and plants do have an immune system. They have an actual immune response system where they can, to some degree, try to fight off, you know, insect and disease infestations if they're good and healthy. So anything that you can do to keep your plant healthy can seriously reduce uh, the, the insect or disease pressure that the tree is going to be under. So things like, you know, occasionally fertilizing and doing it properly, using proper fertilizing techniques. Um, maybe having to get your soil tested and, and get, you know, find out what your soil is, proper pH adjustment in your soil. Mulching, I am a huge fan of mulching. Did I mention mulch? If you watch some of my past videos, you'll see I'm a huge fan of mulching underneath your trees, in your garden, and even in your landscape. There's a ton of benefits of mulch. Uh, you, you get weed suppression, you get moisture retention, it moderates your soil temperature. It can bring in beneficial bacteria and fungus. It creates a home for earthworms and things of that nature. So there's a lot of huge benefits with mulch. And from a cultural point of view, when you're dealing with disease pressures, it can be beneficial for that as well. Remember in the fall now, we're gonna clean up all our leaves and we're gonna clean up all the fallen fruit and all the things that could be harboring those disease spores for the springtime. Now, if you get all that stuff cleaned up, and then you come out in the springtime and you lay a nice thick layer of mulch on the ground, you're actually gonna create a barrier that's gonna make it very difficult. If there's any more spores hanging around from the previous fall, you can actually create a barrier that can make it very hard for those spores to pop up and get through that mulch and then get back onto your tree again. And if those spores, when they pop, if they can't find a host, if they can't get to your apple tree, they're gonna die because they need that host in order to survive. So you can actually use mulch as part of your cultural controls for disease resistance. And at the same time, it's going to provide a lot of benefits in your soil that's going to make your tree healthier. And anytime you have a tree that's healthy, you're going to have a tree that's going to be to some degree disease resistant. So you can, you can build up your tree's health and vigor. You can create a, a, a stronger cuticle on the leaves, which, which provides a, a physical barrier from the fungus and you can have a, a stronger immune response system in the tree as well so that it can fight off these diseases if they do manage to get onto the leaves. Another example of cultural controls is proper pruning. Typically when you're pruning plants, I, I see a lot of people make this mistake. Um, you, a lot of people will prune their plants from the outside in. In other words, they look at a plant and they prune the outside edges of it so it turns into a ball or it turns into a box or it turns into whatever. They just go around it. And that's not the ideal situation for pruning. I do almost all of my pruning from the inside of the tree and I work my way out. You want to get inside your tree, you want to thin it out. Any sucker growths, anything that, that's kind of mismangled in the center of your tree, you want to remove all that stuff and open up the canopy of your plant so that the air can pass through it so that the sunlight can penetrate through the canopy. And what this does is when your trees get wet, that's typically when you're going to have a disease situation because most diseases work off of temperature and moisture or temperature and humidity. And so every time it rains out, you're opening up your tree to an infection. And by opening up your, 
your plant by pruning it in such a way so that you get good air circulation and you get good sun penetration. As soon as that rain stops, that plant's going to start to dry out. It's going to start to dry out and a lot of that moisture is going to go away. And that's going, that in itself can reduce your, your disease pressure because it's less time that your leaves and your stems and your fruit and your flowers, whatever, are wet. And the, the less time that they're wet, the less time there's a risk of infection. Uh, so here's an example of an apple tree that is definitely in need of some pruning. Now if you look at this tree, you will see there's a ton of little branches in here and a whole bunch of what we call suckers or water sprouts that are shooting straight up through the middle of this tree and it's very congested. We're going to start by thinning this tree out and a big part of that is getting all of these, these sucker growths out of here. All this stuff that's kind of just clustering up the inside of the tree. We want to open this all up and get rid of a lot of these things and that's usually how I start. Okay so here's that same tree and as you can see now you can clearly look right through this tree. We've taken all that riffraff out of the middle, all the sucker growths out, all the unwanted growth and now this gives you a much more open canopy. So I am out here now at the food bank orchard that I've made a couple of other videos about and I, I just wanted to kind of use this to put things into perspective. Um, this, this orchard this orchard had been abandoned for about five years and we just took it over uh, last year so we've only been here for about a year. Now this orchard has been sprayed several times with traditional fungicides. Uh, we've got five applications in here already this year and as you can see we still have scab on our apples. Uh, if you look down over here you can see we've got some scab on the leaves and we're, we're having a real issue here with scab this year. Even with five applications in place you can see all the spots on the leaves there. Even with five traditional pesticide applications here this year we're still having a problem with disease and a big part of the reasoning for that is because it's going to take us a couple of seasons to really get our cultural controls in place here and reduce that disease pressure. And another thing that I wanted to talk about is uh, what we call IPM. And this is just an abbreviation. It stands for Integrated Pest Management. And a lot of people, it, it seems as though a lot of people misunderstand IPM and they, they feel that IPM means organic gardening. Uh, and it does not. IPM is not organic gardening. What IPM is, is it's an approach to overall gardening. It's a, a system or a plan where you're doing everything that you can, the, all these cultural controls that we talked about, you're utilizing things of that nature uh, to try to reduce your pesticide need, to try to reduce your insect and disease pressures so that you don't need to spray too often. And another part of integrated pest management is that when you do spray, when you do deem it necessary to actually use a pesticide, whether it's an organic pesticide or a traditional pesticide, either way, when you are using any kind of a spray, it is for a very specific reason at a very specific time for a very specific purpose. You should not be out there just willy-nilly just spraying pesticides on your plants, even if you're using organic stuff. Um, everything that you do in the world of insect and disease control should be very targeted and very specific for exactly what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, I can give you an example of this with the, the food bank orchard. I've got a couple of videos where I, I oversee, uh, it's a large apple orchard and all of the fruit gets donated to the food bank. Now, right down the road from that orchard, is another orchard. It's actually a big commercial orchard where they do pick your own apples and all that and they've been in business for a hundred years and it's a great place. Um, it's, it's almost uncanny how when I go up to the food bank orchard, if I go up there to spray, I'll go up there you know early in the morning before the wind picks up, we'll be out there, I'll be out there spraying, I get all my stuff done, I put the sprayer away, when I'm pulling out of that place I go to drive 
to get to my next account and I'll drive by this this other commercial orchard and their guys are out there putting their sprayer away washing it cleaning it putting it away this happens almost every time I spray the reason for that is because when I go out to spray this orchard I'm waiting I'm watching the weather I'm watching the environment I know exactly when these funguses are gonna move and cause a problem and I go out and I hit them two days before two days before that rain events comes I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna spray well this big orchard they know this too because they've been doing this for ever okay and so it's, it's almost uncanny how we don't we don't talk to each other we don't coordinate our spray programs but almost every time when I go there and spray that orchard when I pull out they're just getting done and they're wrapping up from spraying their orchard because we both understand the, the importance of having your sprays be very targeted at a very specific time of year under a very specific environmental conditions so that they can be effective. You don't want to be out there you know, spraying your trees if they're not going to be effective. So, so that's a part of, the, of IPM is, is not only using all the cultural controls to make sure that you can reduce your need for pesticides, but it's also a part of when you do spray make sure it's going to be effective make sure you have a proper diagnosis make sure you know exactly what it is that you're spraying for and exactly under what environmental conditions these things are going to thrive in so that when you do spray it's a it's a very focused spray for a very specific reason and you're not just out there spraying randomly just for the heck of it and kind of hope for the best This is another property that I've been maintaining for quite a few years now. I've been here for uh, at least 10 years. And as you can see, we've got a lot of nice big apple trees. Um, this place is maintained as a lawn. This is actually, we, we maintain it as a lawn. So the grass gets cut every week. We do a spring and fall cleanup in here. So we're cleaning up all those leaves and all the fallen fruit. The trees do get pruned once a year. Uh, and as you can see, you know, these trees are, they're quite healthy. I mean, they're doing great. The leaves look great. They're putting on a lot of healthy growth. You got a lot of apples in here. And these trees are, are really doing quite well. Now, here's the thing. I have sprayed this orchard, but only three times. We don't maintain this as a high level production orchard. This is a private estate. And so, yeah, we want to get some apples out of here, but it, it's not like we have to, uh, you know, maintain this place at a super high degree. So uh, I've only sprayed these apple trees three times. And you can see, I mean, they look really good. There's very little scab, very little signs of rust or sooty blotch, uh, anything. I mean, I mean, the trees look great. And a lot of that comes down to the cultural controls. The place is maintained properly, it's kept clean, and, uh, and we've been doing it for several years. So we've managed to reduce that disease pressure to the point where with a very minimal spray program, we can actually produce a good amount of fruit. All right, to wrap things up here, uh, I wanna give you guys an example of exactly what I'm talking about throughout this video. Uh, this is the, the big orchard here that we, we just started working at and and you can see it, it's kind of a mess. I mean, you, know, you got grass, tall grass growing everywhere, which makes everything very difficult. If you want to get out here to monitor your trees, um, it, it's just a mess, you know, trying to spray, trying to do anything. It's just horrible. And from a cultural point of view, it's, it's just a disease uh, madhouse. So what we are doing here is we are breaking this entire orchard into quadrants. Uh, probably gonna end up with about five different areas and we're gonna start taking care of these areas one at a time and this is our first quadrant and as you can see it looks quite a bit different what we basically did is we came in here and we bulldozed down all that tall grass to the point where we can cut it with a lawnmower then we went underneath and we sprayed Roundup underneath these trees so that we don't have to weed whack underneath them anymore I'm not a huge fan of Roundup, but there is a time and place when it does what we need it to do. So we got this all cleaned up out here. Now I can come out here with a lawnmower and I can actually cut this grass in one hour. And there's no weed whacking to be done. Everything's clean, neat, tidy. Uh, in the fall, we can do a quick leaf cleanup out here now because we can actually get on the big ride-on blower and we can blow the leaves 
into the middle of the aisles and then we can suck them up with the lawnmower with the uh, with the bagger on it and that will reduce our disease inoculum for next year because any of these leaves that are infected with scab or anything of that nature we can uh, we can just suck them up and haul them off to the compost pile and get them out of here keep things neat and clean and we started using wood chips we brought in we got a oh, five or six truckloads in here and all these areas underneath the trees where we sprayed Roundup we are now putting about four inches of wood chips on them so that these wood chips can help with long-term weed control so we don't have to weed whack we don't have to use Roundup and these wood chips are going to break down they're going to decompose they're going to draw in earthworms and all kinds of beneficial bacteria so that we can improve this soil get the soil healthy so that the trees will be healthy and they'll be less prone to disease to begin with. So we're waiting now to get some more wood chips out here. We got a couple of triaxles on order and uh, we're gonna do this through the whole place. So that ultimately, uh, these trees will start to become self-sufficient. They will, you know, we won't have to worry about fertilizing because the wood chips and the organic matter will take care of that. When we cut the grass, we'll blow the grass clippings right on top of these things so it's more organic matter underneath them more food for the plants more food for the earthworms more food for the soil and the long-term goal is to get this place so that we can maintain it quickly and easily and be more productive and use less pesticides less fertilizers less weed whacking less labor less maintenance less everything and make these trees healthy and productive Guys, I hope this video was helpful. Uh, my goal here really was just to, to really hammer home uh, how important cultural controls can be, you know, in the landscape, in the orchard, anywhere when you're dealing with horticulture. Uh, I wanted to use some case in point examples where you can, you can really see the difference that it makes when you utilize cultural controls as opposed to just relying on chemical pesticides and things of that nature. So in our first video we talked about just the, the basics of, of plant disease and how they work and so that you can understand, if you understand how they work, you can understand how to control them more effectively. In this video here we talked about the importance of cultural controls and how they can really have a huge impact on the amount of disease pressures that you're dealing with and again that's a, that's a key role in, in having to deal with plant diseases. In my next video we're going to actually talk about specific fungicides. We're going to talk about a lot of your more common fungicides that you can pick up over the counter at a garden center or a big box store or hardware store or whatever. And we're going to talk about how they work and what they're effective for and some of the precautions you might want to take when using some or storing some and things of that nature. So that video is going to be coming up pretty soon. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. I hope it kind of gave you some insight as to how to deal with diseases on a more natural way. And if you like the video, hit the like button, leave a comment. If you have any comments, any suggestions, um, you know, a lot of people use different things to control uh, different kinds of diseases. And I, I'd love to hear what you guys do because, you know, we're all in this together and we all work on this stuff together. Um, so if you like the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. There's going to be more videos coming out of this nature and uh, hopefully it helped.